That's the air braking system for the dyno. And I'm gonna show you how we set it up for about 50 bucks. The air brake on the dyno serves two purposes. It'll lock the roller so that when you're trying to load a vehicle on, it's not spinning on you. And it's also an emergency, uh, an emergency stop. On the far side of the dyno here is where the air solenoid is. When you wish to trigger the brake, 12 volts is sent to this air solenoid, which then opens and allows the compressed air to pass through. Now, if you've been around big rigs, you've probably seen very similar air canisters to these here. When the air is allowed to come in, it fills the canister, it moves the diaphragm, it pushes a rod, and then it presses a pair of brake shoes up against the, the drum to prevent it from rolling. For the emergency stop, I'm going to be using this button that I got from Amazon. I'm going to be using this 12 volt AC adapter to trigger my 12 volt air solenoid. And we have a nice cable gland that comes out of the top here. Um, my control wire will come out the top, but uh, it's going to be mounted above the outlet, which uh, for cleanliness, we uh, probably should have a cable gland on the bottom as well. So we're going to go ahead and drill one, and add that to it. Let's go ahead and open this up so we can see what's going on inside of it. Just the basic push button and a box that we need to we need to mount to the uh, to the the stud. And we're going to drill the bottom here for the cable gland. My cable gland is about 20 thousandths over a half an inch. I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. But being that we are drilling into plastic, I'm gonna go ahead and drill it with a half inch drill bit and see if we can screw it in and get some extra threads in there. And That seal compressed. Don't know how well that's going to reach. I'm going to have to get a normal wrench. I'm have to compress that seal and keep it tight in there. All right. We're done with our box modifications. The switch is designed to be pushed to enable the dyno brake, and then you twist it and it pops back out to reset it. So the, it really can work two different, two different ways, depending on which set of terminals you want to use. It can be used to cut off power when you push, push it, or it can be used to deliver power, being that we are triggering a air solenoid, we want to deliver power, which I believe is this side, but we will take our multimeter and we're going to, we're going to give that a try. So we should not have continuity on it right now because the switch is in the out position and we should hear the tone of continuity. I'll try to do this with, do this while I film. You should hear the tone of continuity when we push the button. That's what we want to hear. So the other way would be the opposite. We have continuity here, and then you push it to disable it. That's how most people use it, but being that we are, uh, we are delivering an electrical signal when we hit the stop button, we gotta, gotta use these.
little tiny wires. Let's see if my strippers can can go this small. Hey, that wasn't bad. It stripped more than I intended to, but we can work with that. Might as well do both both of them, even though we're not hooking the other one up quite yet. I've got the box mounted on the wall here. I'm not going to plug the AC adapter in yet. I'm going to go ahead and feed the wires through the lower cable gland. Tighten it down a little bit for now. I'm going to feed my positive into one of the switch terminals. Again, we're going to take the positive. Run it into our switch terminal here. Here is the second trigger for the dyno brake. So this is a remote system that I uh, bought. This is a normal 15 amp, 120 volt outlet. Um, I bought this on Amazon, it's like $13, super cheap. Uh, you can either trigger it on and off by uh, pressing the button directly on it or this handy remote. So you can do it from inside the car or somewhere else in the shop, wherever you might happen to be. So you can see there's essentially three and a half volts leaking through it, essentially nothing. But if I turn it on, We've got, we've got roughly 120 volts. So that's what uh, I need. I'll plug an AC adapter into that. And that will be my second trigger on a different circuit. So we have redundant, uh, redundant safety stops. Because I want to be able to rely on this, I went ahead and threw some zip ties on the AC adapter to keep it uh, locked in. It's not an elegant solution, but it is a functional one. And then on the barrel connector here, uh, it came with a little screw terminal. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus there. Uh, so that's how I'm going to adapt it to wires. It's a lot cleaner than cutting and soldering or crimping or uh, whatever whatever method you choose. But here we have another point of failure where that could uh, come unplugged. Granted, the uh, wiring is going to be routed nicely, but I still want to uh, do what I can to help avoid that from happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little piece of uh, adhesive lined heat shrink on here. And we're going to shrink it down. My heat gun. All right. Now we have a joint that does not want to come apart. So we'll go ahead and run this and uh, show you guys uh, the result. All right, we got both of our triggering methods set up with full redundancy, meaning separate circuits, separate breakers. So on this wall, we have the remote base plugged in. Uh, again, separate circuit. On this wall, we have our emergency stop button all uh, wired in. So I'm gonna show you how those work. If you want to see more videos like this about the dyno, how we're setting it up to control it, the projects we're going to have on here, the, the tunes that we're going to do, like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next video.